I'm 37 years old. I was born and raised in Hatchetelby, Alabama. Um, I'm a mother of four. I'm here at Julia Tuck Wilder Prison for the murder of my fiance. I, my mom and my dad were both alcoholics, and I remember them always fighting and stuff all the time. And I always said that I wasn't going to do that, but I ended up in two abusive relationships. I got into an abusive relationship, relationship when I was 16 years old. Um, I graduated from high school, taught 10% of the class in 1986. I went to Alabama, Uni Alabama State University and I made in majored in computer science uh, for two years, but on my second year I got pregnant. And I left school and went home to my mom. And my mom was gonna keep that child. But when I signed up to go back to school, I found that I was pregnant again. And my mama told me that she wasn't gonna do it, wasn't gonna keep my child because she felt like I wasn't serious about education. It wasn't that I was scared, wasn't serious about my education. I was in an abusive relationship and I hadn't told anyone. And my boyfriend was forcing me to have children. And I got off the, I got out of that relationship eventually, but I've been through went through a lot with him. After I had the two kids from here, my mom put me out, so I ended up living with him and his sister. And he used to beat me a lot. And I moved out from them and got my own place. And he wasn't working in the beginning. We was kinda like living off my welfare check. So he landed a good job. So when he got his first paycheck, he came home with bags of clothes that he had brought to go out with him and his friends that night. And I had asked him why he didn't buy anything to eat, and he told me that um, it was his money, he could do whatever he wanted to do with it. So that night, me and my children, me and my two girls, we ate light bread and grits for dinner because we didn't have any more food. So when I laid down, I prayed a prayer to God to give me a talent to help support my two kids. And um, the next day I went to a softball game and I had did this girl hell, another girl that was playing ball. She was there and she had asked me why I didn't go to cosmetology school because she said that I had some natural talent. Well, I agreed to do that, but not knowing that God had given me that, this talent to take care of my kids. When uh, I went to cosmetology school, it just seemed like everything just came natural. I was doing stuff that the advanced students should have been done doing. So I never gave God the glory for giving me the talent, and I really didn't recognize the talent that God had given me to after I got in trouble. And you know, like the more money I made, the more more money I wanted. You know, I never got into church or anything to give back to what God had given me until after I got in trouble. The person that I killed. A year before I killed him, his his father killed his mother and killed himself, and he had four other children. And about five minutes before his father killed his mother, I ended up talking to her on the telephone. And she had just got out in the hospital from him beating her. So I had called and asked her, did she want me to bring her kids to her to spend some time with until I finished playing softball. And she told me no. She said that um, she wanted her kids to stay with me. She said she didn't want them down there that particular day for some reason. And she told me that when I finished playing softball to come and um, come by her house because she had something that she wanted to discuss with me and her son Preston. Well, before I got to the softball game, his father had already killed her and stuff. So. A lot of people ask me why I hadn't got out of that abusive relationship, and if you don't, you haven't been in one, you really wouldn't understand why people stay or why they put up with what they put up with. But I had promised her that I was going to take care of her kids, so I went through a lot, all the obligation I felt like for living up to my word to help finish raising her younger children. Well, on May 15, 1997, I um went to my boyfriend's job and he wasn't there. So I went to one of his friend's house that I knew that he usually be over and went there and didn't nobody answer the door. So I knew he was in there. So I went inside of the house through the window. And I had been hearing this stuff, but you know, 
I just wanted to see for myself. I had no intentions of hurting anybody when I got in there, but when I got in there, I ended up having to fight with him. I got his knife and he hit me and we, I started fighting with the knife. It, that happened at like eight o'clock that morning and I didn't know he was dead until 11 o'clock that night. And I was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of him. And it might sound strange, but I'm glad I came to prison because I found myself in prison and I also have um, grown very spiritually. And I never really was a spiritual person until you know I came to prison. And when I came to prison, I was real broken. My self-esteem was low and I really didn't have no desire to continue to live. But I started going to the chapel and everything, and I went through a couple of domestic violence classes and stuff, and I would listen to other people's stories, and I was like, dog, I thought I had it bad, but, you know, these people really had it bad. But i just like to thank God for giving me another chance, because it could have been me that day, you know, that died. And I probably would have went to hell because I wasn't living right, you know, and. I didn't put God first in anything. I was caught up in the world and the materialistic things. And I made a lot of money at my business. And I just didn't ever think about God until I was at my weakest point. I would like to tell everyone that's in a domestic violence situation that you don't have to stay. I would, you know, it, it's flags. If he hit you one time, more than likely he'll hit you again. And I know it's hard for people with children for to just leave, but you just have to keep, you have to just keep praying and tell God to give you a path, you know, because you might not make the right decisions and you might just get caught up in another relationship like I did.